Good day students, scholars, and curious viewers. This is Mr. SKT, otherwise known as the Super Kuroishi Teacher. In this lesson, we're going all the way back to GET grade 8 and 9 level to visit the basics of exponents along with the first of the laws of exponents. In our first part of today's lesson, we're going to do a little basics, a little introduction to what exponents actually are. So in my first example over here, I've laid out the first, I've laid out the first example being 2 plus 2 plus 2. We know through basic arithmetic that that equals 6. But that's also equal to the result of 2 times 3. 2 times 3 because there's 3 2s there which also gives you 6. So in other words, multiplication is just addition made short or made simplified. Exponents, on the other hand, here we have 2 times 2 times 2, which we know equals 8. And that's equal to this, to that thing on the right, which we read as 2 to the power of 3, or 2 to the exponent 3, which also equals 8. Why 3? Because there's 3 2's being multiplied. So in other words, exponents are just multiplication made short. So if we do another example of this, here you have x being multiplied by x, and another x, and another x. In South Africa, that dot over there means multiplication. It's very different from the rest of the world. Here you have four x's being multiplied together, which can therefore be simplified into x to the power of four. When it comes to knowing what means what in an exponent, that, num that big number for for the whole thing is known as a base. The small number on top of a base is acts as the exponent, with the whole thing being known as a power. This continues for something like 4x to the power of 5, where x, because it has an exponent there, acts as a base. With 5, that small 5 up there acting as the exponent. That 4, if you remember from your basic algebra, is the coefficient of that x to the 5, and technically is also its own base. So with that being said, we're now going to see how exponents and powers actually influence each other in a way known as the laws of exponents. The first one we're going to be looking at is law number one, multiplication of powers. Here, here I sub the example of x to the a times x to the b. When you have two powers that have the same base, in this case they both have base being x, then what you can simply do, the final answer will just be that same base and then you add the exponents. x to the a times x to the b equals x to the a plus b. So if I had for example 2 to the 2 times 2 to the 3, I can actually combine them. The base will still be 2 and I can add the exponents 2 plus 3 giving me a final simplified answer of 2 to the 5. Another example, x to the 10 times x to the 2. You can add the exponents since they do have the same base, giving me an answer of x to the 12. Remember, these laws, or this law, only occurs with the exponents. There are some minor rules to be followed. For ex the first one 
This applies to same bases. Or this will only happen between um, equal base between bases that are the same. So, for instance, if you are given x squared y cubed times x y squared, what happened here is that that x to the two gets multiplied with that x over there. Since that you may think, well, there's no exponent over there. But if you remember, if you don't see an exponent there, then you have to assume that there's an invisible 1 there. So therefore, that's actually x to the 2 times x to the 1, which gives you x to the 3. And then y to the 3 multiplies with the y to the 2, giving you y to the 5. Here I have AB times BC. The only things that each of those have in common are Bs. So we can actually apply this law to the Bs. As for the A and the C, because there is nothing that multiplies with either of them, they just follow through. So the A just remains A. The B to the 1 times B to the 1. Why is it 1? Well, since you don't see any exponent there, there is what we call the invisible 1. So you have b to the 1 times b to the 1, which gives you b to the 2. And then the c, because there's no other c's over there, it just follows through. And then if you have a situation like x to the 7 times y to the 8 times z to the 9, with nothing else or no other x's, y's, or z's to multiply with each of them, they can all just be put together. Um, the second most important uh, thing to consider, say this along with me, numbers work as normal. If you have 3x to the 3, times 4x to the 4, the 3 and the 4 being numbers, they multiply like they always have. So you would end up with 12 in your final answer, and then the x to the 3 times x to the 4 will follow the law of exponent and give you x final answer of 12x to the 7. Numbers operating like normal, and the law of exponents only working on the exponents. With that being said, we now move on to a small exercise. Here I have give, here I have written out a small exercise for you to do so you can get a little bit of practice over there. If you wish to do this exercise, if you wish to do this exercise by yourself before I do correction, pause the th video in three, two, one. Okay, now that that's done, let us do the correction for this exercise. The first one, a to the two times a to the five times a to the three. They all have the same base, so you can apply the multiplication law of exponent, add them all up. 2 plus 5 plus 3, giving you a final answer of a to the 10. The second one, x squared y cubed times x to the 6, z to the 2, times y to the 4, z. The two x's over there can add up, or so they can multiply and add the exponents, so therefore you should ha end up with x to the 8. The y to the 3 multiplies with the y to the 4 over there, giving you y to the 7. And then the x to the 2 over there, z to the 2, sorry, multiplying with that z over there. Remember, that's a z to the 1. So that's 2 plus 1, giving you z to the 3. 2x to the 2 times 5y to the 2. The 2 times the 5 like normal, because normal numbers, coefficients, so you end up with 10. And when, since that's just, since that's x and y, they are not the same 
base, therefore they just come together, giving you a final answer of 10x squared y squared. 6b squared times 2b to the 3 times 4b to the negative 1. Numbers multiply like normal, so 6 times 2 times 4 will give you 48. And then b to the 2 times b to the 3, which gives you b to the 5. b to the 5 times b to the negative 1, 5 plus negative 1, will give you b to the 4. And then finally, 10 a b to the 3 c to the 2 times 3 a to the 3 b c to the 2 times half a to the negative 2 b c 10 times 3 gives you 30 30 times half will give you 15 a which is a to the 1 times 3 a to the 3 which gives you a to the 4 times a to the negative 2, so 4 plus negative 2 will give you a to the 2. b to the 3 times b to the 1 gives you b to the 4, times another b to the 1 will give you b to the 5. With c to the 2 times c to the 2, c to the 4, times c to the 1 gives you a final answer of c to the 5, thereby 15, a to the 2, b to the 5, c to the 5. And that there is a little, is your lesson, or a little lesson, short lesson, on the first law of exponents being the multiplication of powers. If you, if you enjoyed this kind of content, please like this, like this video, you can keep it trending, subscribe, subscribe, if you want that will bring me closer to monetization and comment and please comment on future lessons that you'd like to see me do with that please have have a nice day